Hi, my name is Jane Powell. Welcome to Community Connections brought to you by the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. This is a show showcasing community involvement and today we're going to learn about West Virginia Health Right. My guest is Rhonda Francis. You are the clinical coordinator at West Virginia Health Right and you've been there a long time so I know you're going to tell us everything we need to know. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I love to talk about the clinic. I've actually been at the clinic, it'll soon be 21 years. 21 years! It's been a long time. So and we've seen a lot of changes and added a lot of services. So I'm happy to talk about our services today and what's going on. Um, especially during this COVID pandemic, we've had a lot of issues and had to make a few changes because of that. Um, but we were one of the clinics that actually stayed open during this whole pandemic. We never shut our doors. So I think that right there is just huge. You are yes. open and you have been open. We are open. Um, we are back to a full service as of June 1st, mm -hmm. um, but as when the pandemic hit, we went down um, to where we had to shut down our outreaches and we had to shut down our mobile unit during that time. Mm -hmm. um, and then we actually went to some telehealth for some of our patients that were compromised, mm -hmm. um, but anybody was willing to walk into that clinic that needed help. Wow. And when you say anybody that needed help, there are so many services that West Virginia Health Right off offers to um, the community. I don't even know where to begin. I, so there's medical services. Yes, we have primary care. We also have behavioral health. Mm -hmm. We have vision. We have dental. And we have pharmacy services. And we also have health education classes. Wow. So. And this is all done through volunteers, mostly through volunteers. Mostly volunteers. We do have a staff, um, and our staff has grown some, but mainly our staff is paid through grant funding that we couldn't do without. So a relatively small staff with a huge army of volunteers. Yes, we are up to over 600 volunteers. And uh, I just need to point out that those volunteers are trained medical uh, personnel that are giving their time to the community and to your organization. Yes. And it's really wonderful. Yes. And we that's actually a have, um, on our evening clinics, we actually have docs that come in for people for after hours mm -hmm. when our nurse practitioners leave. So on Mondays and Thursday nights from 5 to 7, we have docs that come in after they've been in their office all day and come in and see patients because some patients work and, you know, they have to have a paycheck so they can't just take off to come during the day. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. So uh, all the medical services, and then something that I just find fascinating, you have a mobile dental unit. Yes, we do. We love our mobile dental unit, and I we could not dental. do the mobile dental without the help of the Greater Canal Valley. Well, thank you. Um, it is a huge, huge help to us. Um, we have a wonderful um, dentist um, from Marshall, and we have a wonderful hygienist and a dental assistant and a driver mm -hmm. that goes out to five different counties. Um, we did have to actually pull that during the pandemic um, because we weren't, you know, going out because of mm -hmm. the safety issues and the PPE. But we were able to switch over that mobile unit into a medical unit during that time and service it and put it in Manamil because there was a huge need of patients all of a sudden that were homeless that had never been homeless because of the pandemic mm -hmm. and were going there to get food. So we set that up as a medical unit um, and seen patients from there, tested them and a homeless population that would have never have gotten tested had we not set that up. And to this date, we're still going to Manna Mill. Um, we've tested and seen and screened over 3,000 patients there. Wow. And I'm happy to say so far, everyone that we have tested has come back negative. That's amazing. And a lot of these patients has actually followed up and gotten primary care as well and behavioral health services. And I feel like had we not been out there, we wouldn't have been able to touch that population. That's right. So you've touched them and you uh, continue to service them. So that's yes. wonderful. Yeah. Um, so uh, we should just point out that um, you have taken, you, you personally and uh, West Virginia Health Right is taking great care to protect the staff and the volunteers. And I know that you're testing patients and that you have um, masks and the, and the equipment mm -hmm. that you need and that you guys are being safe and, and careful. Yes, we are. We actually um, went 
to that actually to some of our stakeholders and said, hey, we need some PPE, we need to stay open or we're going to have to close our doors. There are several that came to the bat um, for us and that was direct relief and heart to heart that gave us immediately N95 mask, mm -hmm. um, surgical mask, gloves, face shields, wow. hand sanitizer, you name it, we got it. And that's one of the reasons we're able to do what we're doing right now. And it's one of the reasons that we actually, as of June 1st, opened back up full service with our outreaches and put our mobile dental unit back on the road again. We were able to keep them safe um, and secure and they can actually get back out and service the patients that they need in those counties. Mm -hmm. I've had a chance to, to visit the mobile unit and actually see it in action in a different county. Mm -hmm. And the people that travel um, miles to have those dental services, it is touching and I'm so glad that it's there. It is very touching and we hear a lot of wonderful stories. Um, just in the year 2019, they saw over 2,900 unduplicated patients and they did over 5,300 procedures with Fifth one dentist. Wow. So what they actually try to accomplish when they're out there is Dr. Shaw tries to do his very best to get everything done in one visit that he can because these patients are so transit, they don't have transportation or, you know, if they have to take off work, some of them are working two and three jobs. So we try our very best to get everything done in that one visit right. that we can. And we should say that this mobile clinic, it is a dental office. There's yes. everything that you could want inside. It is not uh, makeshift. It is state-of-the-art. It is state-of-the-art. It's pretty awesome. And like I said, it was made also in an emergency capacity that we, if we had to, we could switch it over to a medical unit, which happened. We, none of us were thinking anything about a pandemic and right. how to deal with it. But thankful that we actually, Dr. Settle came up with the idea to switch that over and have that made that way. Mm -hmm. You and Dr. Settle have been a team for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. You're 21 doing, years. <laughs> 21 years. You're doing good stuff. You're making it happen. Um, so there's the medical services that you're offering and there's dental services that you're offering. Your pharmacy is also open, is that right? Yes, our pharmacy is open and we've also seen an increase of patients needing medications that normally had insurance that don't have it now due to you know being out of work and not able to go back to work. So we had a huge increase. Um, and we try to keep our patients safe and our pharmacy staff as well. We came up with the option to actually pour up in our portico. They could drive up, they could make a phone call, we'd have their prescriptions ready and we would just take it out to them. Mm -hmm. um, and of course with a face shield on as well. And also patients that were compromised and cannot drive in um, and we have a lot of patients with COPD and um, diabetes that just should not be out. Um, we were able to mail those medications and we're still doing that today. That's wonderful. Um, the pandemic has touched all of our lives and I think you and I were discussing that it is trying in the best of circumstances. And you have also kept your counseling services available yes. to people. Yes. We have actually had a need to expand our behavioral health. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot more patients calling in that have anxiety and depression as well um, that never had it before, having panic attacks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you sit and you watch the news and you stress about it, then it's going to happen. And people without a job as well, um, people that are homebound that now you can't get out like you used to, um, it's caused a lot of mental illness as well. We have expanded. We actually moved um, one of our nurse practitioners, it's a family nurse practitioner, as a behavioral health. As of July 1st, we've um, expanded that program. We have three recovery coaches on staff now. Um, we have a licensed professional counselor and a psychologist and a substance use disorder counselor that also goes out on our outreaches. Wow. Um, our addiction recovery has expanded and during the pandemic we also noticed um, there was a lot of patients that relapsed because they couldn't get what they needed. Um, some of the sober living shut down because they weren't taking in new patients because they were afraid of COVID. 
Um, so we still saw those patients and got them what they needed. Um, and also, since then, as opening our doors full service again and out on outreaches, we've had 11 in June actually go back into recovery that had relapsed. So they're back on the same road that they were on before. That's wonderful. Which, yes, it's very exciting. Um, and our patients also, uh, talking about dental, that all goes in together. Um, a lot of those patients, you know, that are in recovery need their teeth worked on. Mm -hmm. um, so they're getting all of those services all at the same place. Wow. And we should just mention, um, so there is the mobile dental unit, but Health Rights uh, main hub, main office, is at 1520 East Washington Street in uh, Charleston. But you do have satellite clinics as well. We do. We have a satellite clinic at Covenant House. Mm -hmm. Our satellite clinic, we had opened back um, in October, and we were only doing it for eight hours a week. Officially, um, as of June 1st, we're actually there five days a week from 8 to 4. Mm -hmm. So we're actually doing primary care as well. We have addiction um, services there. Any referrals that need for vision and dental will be referred into our main clinic. We actually have a passenger van and a driver that can drive them back and forth so they can come from the main clinic to the satellite clinic. Nice. And we have a recovery coach actually stationed now at Covenant House that can help the homeless that are out there and get them actually in recovery as well. Wonderful. And it's a big program and we don't have time to go in depth, but can we just touch on HOPE? Yes. Our HOPE program is an exciting program. Um, it's a program that is actually helping moms and dads that are in addiction, that, are, um, that need help basically to keep their children, to keep them from going into foster care, mm -hmm. and to also help those that do have children in foster care to get their children back. We have it set up actually with um, a hope room so that they can bring their kids so that they can actually attend their appointments. Mm -hmm. And we try our very best to get every appointment on that same day. So we actually coordinate their care, and that's part of what of our case management does. Mm -hmm. They'll actually coordinate vision, dental, whatever they need on that day, and they'll actually see the behavioral health team as well. Wow. That changes someone's life. It does change their life. And it's very exciting to hear. We've actually, in the last week or so, we've actually had one that actually got her child back. Oh, for wonderful. visitation. And every time that we did, we always tell them we're their cheerleader. We're there for them. Yep. And we celebrate that win. Absolutely. That's wonderful. So there's programs happening in the mobile clinic. There's programs happening at your uh, hub on Washington Street, at the satellite. And then there's also online classes. Yes. So we used to have a ton of online classes, which we hopefully soon will get back to. But during the pandemic, we had to shut that down because of safety issues. Of and short-staffed, it was hard to screen everybody coming in. So our lovely health educator, Larry, came up with the idea to actually do them online. So on our Facebook page, he actually has the scale program every Thursday, and he will show you how to do a tasty meal that's healthy to eat. Um, Wait, cooking classes online. Yes, cooking I love that. <laughs> and the staff love it because we actually get to eat the food. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. Um, we're hoping soon that we'll actually, and we'll announce it, that we get back to actually doing our on-site classes That's soon. wonderful. So West Virginia Health Rights Facebook page. You can also visit the website, which yes. is westvirginiahealthright.org. Uh, the phone number, if anybody had questions, is 304. There it is on screen, 304-414-5930. Rhonda, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. West Virginia Health Right is doing so many programs for our community. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. And West Virginia Health Right to me will always be a passion. And I love seeing people when they get what they need and the health care they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for everything. Thank and thank you. you guys for joining us. This has been... Community Connections brought to you by the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. We'll see you next time.